Uh, so I'm going to try and add some uh, new content to my channel that's not Minecraft. So uh, I'm going to start with uh, what is my favorite board at the moment. And uh, it's my favorite for a few reasons, um, which I think I will try and explain in this video. And uh, so there are basically four things I want to tell you about this board. Number one, uh, this is a mechanical keyboard. Uh, number two, it's a custom keyboard and uh, number three it's fully programmable and uh, did I say four number four I love it I absolutely love this thing okay so uh, the first thing it's a mechanical keyboard so mechanical keyboards have got really really popular the past couple of years um, a lot of companies like Razer and Corsair are making mechanical keyboards now so that's really cool they're getting really popular and uh, this is one of those uh, kind of boards um, as opposed to uh, boards that work with uh, rubber membranes, uh, that kind of thing. This is a mechanical, key mechanical keyboard, which means the switches um, work in a, a pretty different way to the mass-produced keyboards that you uh, usually see on, your, on the shelves of your local uh, electronics retailer. Um, so this one in particular is not using Cherry. So Cherry is the, the kind of switch that is really popular at the moment in most keyboards that uh, are mechanical. This one doesn't use cherry switches though. This, this one uses um, a kind of slightly uh, niche uh, hipster. No, I won't say hipster. Uh -huh. This one uses Alps switches, which are a kind of a bit of an, an older, not very common nowadays uh, kind of brand. And this one uses uh, genuine Alps switches. Um, there's a company called Matthias that is remaking um, uh, switches that work with old. Uh, caps that you could use on out switches but these ones are genuine article from uh, back in the 80s I think um, so the different there are uh, there are so many differences between uh, Alps and cherry switches it's really hard to uh, to explain them and I'm not an expert on this thing by any means um, but the basic differences I think are the actuation uh, level is a little bit higher on the uh, Alps switches um, which means that the point where the the, uh, the character that you that you're pressing will appear on the screen is, is comes a bit quicker, uh, so it's, it's actually literally higher up on the on the switch as well. Um, uh, so that means there's a, a shorter uh, travel on these switches too. So I think that these are uh, 3.5 millimeters of travel, and um, cherry switches are four millimeters of travel. So that's another difference in them as well. So the amount that it goes down until you hit the bottom of it is, uh, is about three and a half millimeters. Um, quicker, uh, maybe, possibly. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't really make any difference to me because I'm such a slow typer. Um, another thing is perhaps a bit of wobble, a bit more wobble on the keys. But it does mean, as some people say, that it does mean that uh, you don't have to hit the keys exactly dead center like you usually do on a cherry switch. A little bit more forgiving, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure about that. I need to kind of try out a little, a, a lot more things, a lot more switches before I can say if that's true or not. Um, but yeah, uh, so these are. Um, this is a mechanical keyboard using out switches. The next thing is a custom keyboard. So this is not one that you can buy uh, from the shops. You can't go down the shops and, and get this one. This is one that is custom, was custom made through uh, a very small group buy on Geek Hack. Um, it ran, uh, I think it started uh, in October uh, 2015. And was it 2015? Yeah, I think it was last October 2015 where the project kind of was first floated uh, by Koala Pear, and uh, I think Scully Dazed is the one who designed the uh, the PCB. So I think there's a bit of a collab between them. I'm not sure how that all got started, but uh, yeah, the two of them came up with this idea together. Um, the idea of having what you can obviously see a, a board with the keypad on the left side, so you can have your your mouse here, and you could be entering numbers on this side, which kind of makes sense, really. Um, so when I saw it, I was like, "Whoa, gotta have one," because um, it looks so cool. Um, the only thing that was a problem for me and probably a lot of other people was the price. So it was $250 and I was like, oh no. But I think the last week or the week before uh, the deadline, uh, I finally kind of caved in and uh, decided to, to get one of these. So the caps that it uses are from an old Apple extended keyboard 2. Um, so you can see it's all of the keys on the bottom are exactly the same size. and. Uh, 
the font is kind of a bit funky, a bit of a weird font, and it's kind of a little bit italic size, so they're going slightly off that way. Um, you've got lowercase uh, writing on here. It's kind of a bit a bit odd, a bit odd looking, but I really like it. I really love the look of these caps as well. Um, so the keyboard is kind of a, it's in three parts. So you've got the, the top plate, this is the black part here, and then uh, the middle part, which is uh, acrylic, and then the bottom part, which is uh, aluminium as well. So the top and the bottom are aluminium, and the middle part is uh, acrylic. So this is also another unique point about this keyboard is that the, uh, the top and the bottom are uh, keracoated. I think that's how you pronounce it. The stuff that they often use on guns and stuff, so it's really tough wearing. You can get loads and loads of cool colors that you, you cannot get if you anodize. Um, I went for boring colors. <laughs> One of the things that I regret, I should have gone for a kind of a bit more of a wilder color scheme, but yeah, I'm kind of a conservative kind of guy. So yeah, I went for, um, what was the color again? Socom blue. And on the top and on the bottom, I went for satin aluminum. Oh, it's got some fingerprints. It's a bit dirty. Yeah, it's been traveling. It went to the, uh, the Tokyo uh, Geek Hack, uh, sorry, R Mechanical Keyboards Meetup. Oh God, I can't get those two mixed up. There'll be war on the internet. It was very limited, so I think the, in the end, there was only about 20, maybe 22 people uh, who uh, got one of these boards, so it's pretty, it's pretty rare, and I don't think there's gonna be a second round uh, either. So yeah, this is it. I would love to get another one though. Or even if I could just get a replacement uh, top plate, that would be cool too. Uh, and that might be possible. Anyway, so it's a pretty unique board, unique looking and uh, pretty limited, uh, limited run. Um, well, I talked about the switches, but I didn't show any switches. So uh, let, me, let me see if I can safely remove a switch without hitting the camera. Here we go, okay. So these are cream dampened out so alps come in uh, quite a few different colors and quite a few different variations that's one of the things that makes them kind of a little bit more interesting than uh, the cherry mx for me anyway um so these ones are cream colored and they're dampened so they've got a little bit of a rubber uh, bit of piece of rubber on each side so it dampens the top uh, the, the downstroke and the and the upstroke as well i think um and i've kind of modded them as well to be uh, clicky as well um so again cool thing to do, cool custom board and a little bit of customization as well on the switches. So these are my favorite switches actually. Uh, if I have the chance to find some green, uh, some Alps greens or some blues, I would love to swap those out uh, and put those in, in here instead. Um, the next point is that it's fully programmable. So uh, programmable uh, keyboards uh, is a kind of a big selling point nowadays, especially for the gaming keyboards. You can put macros in and stuff like that. Um, so this one is a fully pro programmable keyboard. So for example, for me, I've had a bit of a play around with the firmware. So this key is, is not delete anymore. Uh, actually, this is delete. So I've, switched, I've moved those around. So this is delete. Um, and I think I've changed this to the control as well. So you've got delete here and control here. And then uh, I think I'm gonna change this one to be something else. So you can make the keys do anything you like. Um, and this is the function key. If I press this key and press this one, then I'll get F1. So all the F keys are going from this way up uh, that way. Um, and I've, if I press this and this is my up, these are my up and down arrows and the left and right, and then they can be a numpad as well. And of course I've got the numlock key as well if I wanna keep them like that instead of having them to be pressed uh, uh, like a momentary switch, a momentary layer. Um, what else? Oh, another thing. Oh, I gotta, I gotta move cables around off camera. All right, the other cool thing which is also kind of getting trendy nowadays, is, uh, let's see, is this plugged in? No, it's not plugged in this end. That was the big reveal, that was a big reveal. Okay, there we go. Um, so it has a few surface mount LEDs on the side, which means that it, uh, it can become flashy. So it can be understated one minute and then it can be all flashy and gaudy the next. Um, no RGB, this is just single color uh, white LEDs going around the side. Um, they don't do any fancy patterns or flashing strobes or breathing. Um, they just have a few, uh, a few levels that they go, uh, which one is it, this one, right. off. And then you can make them a little bit brighter like that. Yeah, and that's also customizable as well in the firmware. 
if I when I, when I become smart enough to understand how to <laughs> how to change those, then I'll uh, I'll probably have a play around with those and add some add some more steps into them as well. Um, yeah, so that's that's what it does. Uh, I guess I could uh, open it up and we can have a look at the PCB. I'll probably uh, fast forward this because this this could take a while. All the screws are around here. All right, so all the screws are off. And if we gently slide it out, you can see the keyboard comes right apart. There we go. So you can see the the bottom plate and the center plate, plate with the, the acrylic plate. And then if we turn this over, now I did solder this myself. I soldered this all by myself. It was my first time. So uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. I'm pretty pleased with it. If you, if you can see there, it's not bad. It's not bad for a first soldering job. And you can just see the tiny uh, surface mount LEDs there. Mm like there right and uh, the diodes uh, here and a very very itty bitty tiny uh, resistors there as well which I did all by myself uh, so I'm quite pleased with that <laughs> and uh, yeah I was really pleased with this so this is another cool thing about this keyboard that uh, not only is it custom but uh, I built it myself I feel like a Jedi building their first lightsaber um, yeah, so that's that's basically what I wanted to say about this keyboard, and uh, I hope I'll be able to make some more keyboard-related content on my channel and uh, diversify a little bit uh, going forward. Uh, so thanks for watching, and if you liked it, leave a thumbs up, and uh, maybe think about subscribing and support Mechanical Keyboards uh, in Japan. <laughs> thanks very much. See you next time. Bye-bye.